Thank you. Thank you, Enoch Choir. We believe the praise gave glory to God and the saints have applauded in agreeing. And today is the second week of on-site service for Wednesday service. And through this praise, we think, and it sounds like God reprimanding us to have greater faith, and we look back at ourselves. And if it weren't for Enoch Choir preparing for this on-site service that had been done in a hurry, we couldn't have done it. And our founding pastor said, if the big ox leaves, then the small ox starts working. But we are not uh, small oxes, oxen. We are people who have been waiting and in hiding. And these are the people who are keeping their spots. And last week, Moriah Sanctuary was full And apparently, it was very shocking for the breakaway side. And during these difficult times, as we work hard, this is the strength of the Pyongyang Church and our saints. And in faith, we believe that we will be able to overcome. And today is the prayer and laying of hands for the 2024 college entrance exams. And tomorrow is the college entrance exams, and usually we always do it the day before, and the parents of the students were worried that it might be burdensome for the kids, the students. And from now on, we will do it in the high school ministry. And they did used to do it in the high school ministry. But the day before, for Wednesday service, we will hold a prayer for the people who are taking the exams. And I asked Reverend Kim byung Chol, who is in charge of the high school ministry, and I asked him how many students will come. And he said there will be students who will come. And that's why we actually prepared for on-site service. And the students who came to receive the laying of hands today and the young adults and the students, and we are really thankful for them. And I'm sure that the other high school students are here in heart. And let's, let's give them a round of applause to give them some strength. And thank you. As our presiding pastor read, in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 through 11, I would like to share the message, what we need during trials and afflictions. I prepared this word for the students who are preparing for the exams, but actually it is for all of us because our church is going through trials and afflictions, and there are things that we need. And when each of our saints have that, then we are able to overcome. And the title of today's sermon and the test that they will be taking tomorrow, the meaning is different. But no matter what kind of trial it is, the, the essence and the way to overcome those trials is the same. And that's why I decided on this title. And in 2011 and 2012, our founding pastor has always had already given the word or sermon on this. And when we go through trials and afflictions in our lives, what do we need? First is a heart that deeply comprehends. A heart that deeply comprehends. And what is a heart that deeply comprehends? We must think about why we are going through these trials and afflictions and the meaning. And we should, it's a heart that thinks about it. 
and asks oneself. So a heart that deeply comprehends is a heart that is remorseful. Why are they remorseful? When they realize the meaning of the trials and afflictions that God gave, they become remorseful. And that is a heart that brings about repentance. When we go through trials and afflictions in our lives, our heart and our mindset must be different, and the Bible speaks of this. In today's scripture, Apostle Paul went through great trials and afflictions, and he confesses of this. In 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 and 9, it says, For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, of our affliction which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond their strength, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves. Apostle Paul describes his trials and afflictions in three ways. First, burdened excessively beyond strength and despaired even of life and had the sentence of death within himself and within themselves. And we, when we have problems in our families or as individuals, we actually don't reach this point. Burdened excessively beyond strength is probably something that goes beyond what they can do. And second, despaired even of life means that they don't see an exit. All four sides are blocked and it's difficult to even take a step. And third, had the sentence of death within themselves means that it was in a dire situation where they would give up on their lives. And how difficult would it have been to, for someone like Apostle Paul to think that he received a death sentence? Then why did God let Apostle Paul go through these trials and afflictions If it were something he did for himself or he was to be rebuked because of his laziness in doing God's work, then Apostle Paul would have accepted it with a glad heart. But when we look in the Bible, Apostle Paul was doing the command of God and spreading the gospel, and he received and went through these trials during that process, and he could not understand. Perhaps Apostle Paul going through these difficulties while doing God's work was probably burdensome and despaired even of life and received a death sentence in his heart. And he probably had a deep testing in his heart and he was probably deeply tested. I am doing God's work. Why am I going through these trials and of difficulties and afflictions? He probably asked that question in his heart. The sentence of death, this expression is saying, did God abandon me? And it's a severance or a Think, thinking that he was cut off but, and it felt like God cut him off. He expressed this heart. Our founding pastor, when he spoke of this, he said, if one's life is 70 years long, one needs to experience affliction about 20 times. So these afflictions is not something that is very small. It's something that brings about a turning point in one's life. And when we experience this about 20 times, we are truly matured. And that's what this means. And there, there are small and big trials and afflictions in our lives, in our relationships with other people, and how we do not understand each other. 
But as I've said today, like Apostle Paul doing God's work and going through these difficult times, it's probably hard for us to find such people around us. Our students who will be taking the college entrance exams are here or at home and preparing and everybody's situation or circumstances are different but everybody is probably um, nervous and want to give up or just fall into despair and I think many students will have experienced that and even though it's different, the area and the subject of it is different. This is probably what the high school students are going through right now. Then why did God give such trials and afflictions to Apostle Paul? And that is because he wanted to make Apostle Paul rely and trust in God. And it was his method to make him realize. And sometimes God's method is very hard to endure and bear. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 9, Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Apostle Paul, going through trials and afflictions, this is what he confessed. First, he was tested and he probably wavered, but through that process, what he learned is that he should not rely in himself, but in God who raises the dead. And that is what he realized was the grace of God given to him. And he realized that he must not rely on his own strength and he probably had aspects of his faith where he relied on himself. But when God sees that, he tells us not to rely or trust in ourselves. And Apostle Paul probably had aspects of this. In order to awaken Apostle Paul, he made Apostle Paul go through difficulties and trials where he despaired even of life and felt like he received the death sentence. Apostle Paul, who went through these trials and afflictions, what was it that he needed? And as I said, it's a heart that deeply comprehends. What is the will of God and what is the heart of God? It's a heart that comprehends and understands that. And when we have that, the Holy Spirit tells us the meaning of the trials and afflictions that we are going through. And He allows us to have a repenting heart. So Apostle Paul, through these trials, he had a deeply understanding and comprehending heart. And he realized that these trials are not the end. And it's probably perhaps a start of a new step of faith that God has and planned, has planned and prepared. And this is in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 10 who delivered us from so great a peril of death and will deliver us, he on whom we have set our hope, and yet, and he will yet deliver us. And Apostle Paul became someone who was experienced in trials and afflictions, and he believed that God would deliver him. And that is what he confessed. And for our high school students and our saints in our daily lives and through the church or through the nation, we may meet trials and afflictions. And whatever it may be, we must first deeply think about it and comprehend and understand it. And we must know why God gave us these trials and afflictions. And we must look back at ourselves 
and become renewed, and there must become such opportunity. In Ecclesiastes 7, verse 14, it says, In the day of prosperity, be happy, but in the day of adversity, consider. God has made the one as well as the other, so that man will not discover anything that will be after him. The author of Ecclesiastes said, In the day of adversity, consider or think. It means to have a heart that comprehends. Our high school students who will be taking the exams tomorrow, they are test takers. And when they take the test, they may be flustered. And I think back to the time I took the test. And they may be flustered or in panic. But according to the word today, may they have a heart that deeply comprehends. And as they take the exam, I believe that they will have such different results that they want. And through Apostle Paul, what we can learn today is the existence of God. Hey, you don't do it with your own strength. God's existence, when we think about it, how can I rely on God and trust everything to Him? And when we think about that, the starting point is different. And believing so, may they first deeply comprehend and have a heart that deeply understands as they take the test. And no matter what trial and afflictions we go through, may we have such heart so we can overcome those trials and difficulties. And I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Second is a faith that only relies on God. Second Corinthians 1 verse 9 says, Indeed, we had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust in ourselves but in God who raises the dead. We believe that Apostle Paul is a great person, but when God sees him, God tells him and encourages him to rely only on God and trust in God. Trust only in God. Apostle Paul had great, received great education and he had a great personality. And through many trials and afflictions, he could persevere for the will of God. Not only was he educated, but on site, he, he had gone through many things so that he can overcome and do the will of God. There, wasn't a, there was no one like Apostle Paul who could do God's work and spread the gospel like him at the time. But God didn't want the human efforts and human skills to spread the gospel of God and for humans to be glorified. But he told Apostle Paul that you are a tool. And no matter how great and how outstanding he was, he could not have realized unless he reached the point of death and received the death sentence in his heart. God who revives the dead, and he probably this is an expression that made Paul realize and God wants us to only trust in Him and rely on Him. Therefore, when there are problems in the lives of the saints and we go through trials and afflictions, that itself is not the problem. But for saints, we, we going through those trials and afflictions and yet not being able to find God's will or being ignorant spiritually or relying on ourselves, these things are more problematic. When we say a faith that relies on God, 
what does it mean to rely and, and trust? It means it completely entrusting all the problems to God in their heart and through actions. In Psalm 37, verse 5, it says, Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He will do it. And Psalm 55, verse 22, Cast your burden upon the Lord. Our high school students who will be taking the exams, they feel probably feel very burdened in their heart. But when we pray for them, trust entrust everything to God. And to entrust means that your heart does not worry. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, casting all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. When we have worries in our hearts and we say we entrust everything to God and sometimes we try to rely on people, that's not completely entrusting. God said, do not trust in Egypt. And in church, we have aspects where we try to trust in Egypt or the world, and we have fear. But God sees our hearts, and He knows all the problems and issues that we have. And if we are in trials and afflictions because of our mistakes, then a heart that understands and realizes and when we trust in God, God will come and allow us to become people who overcome such trials and afflictions. And lastly, number three, big point number three is continuous prayer. Second Corinthians 1 verse 11, you also joining and helping us through your prayers so that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the favor bestowed on us through the prayers of many. He requested the congregation of Corinth to pray for him, and what this means is he prayed continuously through his trial and afflictions and realized the importance of prayer, and that is why he asked the congregation of Corinth to pray for him. When we go through difficulties and trials, what do we need? Continuous prayer. Apostle Paul, he prayed continuously so he will not fall down, and he prayed that God will deliver him. In the same way, are there saints today who are going through trials and afflictions? Then it means we must pray continuously. When we go to trials and afflictions, we must pray continuously, and that is the command of God. And our high school students and young adults who are taking the college entrance exams, you must pray continuously and take the exam with the praying heart. I'm not saying don't take the test and close your eyes and pray. What does it mean to pray continuously? First is praying all the time. Luke 18, verse 1, Now he was telling them a parable to show that at all times they ought to pray and not to lose heart. Jesus said this in a parable, and it means before you fall into despair or disappointed, Pray first. Before you fall into despair and are disappointed, pray first and be awake. And I bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. And it says, devote yourselves to prayer. Colossians 4 verse 2, it says, devote yourselves to prayer. And small point number two, pray without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, pray without ceasing. Seizing, is, it tells us to pray as if we are breathing. If we don't breathe, we can't live. So praying all the time without rest. And praying until we receive an answer. That is praying without ceasing. 
And lastly, small point number three, praying with the spirit and with the mind. This is continuous prayer. Praying with the spirit and with the mind. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, what is the outcome then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the mind also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the mind also. Even though you're taking the test, your heart will be taking the test while praying to God. And you pray with the spirit and pray with the mind and your spirit and mind is focused on God, then you walk with God and you go before God. Deuteronomy 4 verse 7 says, prayer is drawing near to God. For what great, a great nation is there that has a God so near to it as is the Lord our God whenever we call on Him. The moment you are praying, God comes to us and He gives us the grace that is necessary at the time and He holds on to us. So for our high school students who will be taking the exams, you can pray with your spirit and with your mind and with such attitude, pray towards God. And as you take the test, we believe that God will take you down the good path and in conclusion, going through the trials and tests is not the will of God. You and I going through trials and afflictions is not the will of God. When we think about it as a parent's perspective, it, that's how it is, right? Which, what kind of parent wants their child to go through a hard time? You try to be logical about it, but your heart still aches. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, it says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. This is the heart of God. And it's a riddle for us because we always have trials and afflictions in our lives. Even if they are things that we place upon ourselves, God does not, that is not the meaning that God has for us. It is so that He makes us like gold. Job 23, verse 10. But He knows the way I take. When He has tried me, I shall come forth as gold. I don't know if they have it these days, but when I went to the army, when I went into the army, there was a sanctuary and this verse was written there and it was very it very it comforted me very much acts 14 verse 22 strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of god our church is going through difficult times but it's not for nothing it's within the plan of god so that we can become stronger and become more clearer so that the faith, the mission that God has for us, we may become people who can take and fulfill such missions and that we will come forth as gold. When we realize God's will, then the college entrance exams that you will take tomorrow is the first step. And it may seem like something that is so difficult, but we have the living God with us and He is our Father God. And the word today says, understand and pray, and pray continuously. Then God, just as he delivered Apostle Paul, he will know every one of us, every and each and one of us, and deliver us. And he has a straight and peaceful path that he has for us. And believing in this, no matter what trials and afflictions we may go through, May we always have these three things that we need so that we overcome and become more mature in our faith. And I pray this upon you, the high school students and the young adults and all the saints of Pyongyang. Let's pray. Fa loving Father God, we thank you. This is the second Wednesday service on site. And today we our students and our young adults 
came here for the laying of hands for this service. And although there may be trials and difficulties in our lives, it, you make us people worthy of going to heaven. And even if we are weak and brought this upon us, may we have hearts that understand and comprehend. And may we always rely on you. And please give us this faith. And no matter what circumstance we are going through, what situation we are in, may we always pray. And please lead us and guide us. No matter what trials and afflictions come our way, may we overcome and look at and go forward to the blessings that you have prepared on the other side of the trials and afflictions. Our precious high school students and young adults that are preparing to take the exams tomorrow, please remember them and may this worship service comfort them and the laying of hands equip them spiritually so that they can overcome the test and get good results beyond what they have prepared for this college entrance exam. We believe in this and pray in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen.